Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on the sort of a spot repair I guess you would call it because we're only painting the lower section of the rear door on this Range Rover Sport. So the previous video we went through the prep work, colour matching, we did the uh, primer work as well. So we put a bit of UV primer onto it, put it out in the sun, let that cure in the sun. Brought it back in, did the prep work, colour matching, and we're right to go into the booth for a quick mask up. So obviously gave it a good blow off first to make sure there's no dust and dirt and crap around. Cleaned all the edges down and uh, yeah, ready to start masking. So it's pretty basic what I'm doing here. I mean, I've said it in previous videos, I find it a little bit difficult to narrate masking. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, I'll do my best to keep you guys interested in the masking stage. But on the other hand, I have had people say that they really have learnt a lot from watching me mask. So, um, if you do enjoy watching me mask, be sure to sit down for the next, uh, where are we going to be starting paintwork, around the five minute mark. So, if that doesn't interest you, the masking stage and listening to me try and think of some shit to say, just skip up. We all do it. I do it when I'm watching videos if I get a little bit bored. So if you're only interested in the uh, painting stage, just skip up to around five minutes and maybe a little bit further on. But yeah, I like to have a, uh, a, a rag in my pocket when I'm doing the masking just in case there is a little bit of uh, dirt or something on the edge. Um, I find it's not usually necessary to wipe a job down with wax and grease remover before I mask it, unless there's like silicon or yeah, just a contaminant on the panel that specifically needs to be cleaned off, because you're gonna wipe it down with wax and grease remover before you paint it anyway. Um, although sometimes I just, I do it because I just feel like it, and I have done it both ways, and I have found it doesn't necessarily come out any cleaner. If there was like a, a clear advantage of prep soling it or wax and grease remover, before masking, I would probably do it every time, but um, it does take a little bit extra time, obviously, not a great deal of time, but when every minute matters in a production shop like this, you know, you've got to find those uh, those minutes, um, and I guess even you've got a little bit more material usage. Obviously, you're going to have to be getting some clean rags because you don't want to go and wipe dirty rags over your blend areas, and uh, just that little bit of prep soil, which, again, it all adds up. It doesn't, one specific job isn't going to break the bank, but um, over a year, you know, you might save yourself $50. And if you do that on 10 different things, there's $500. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's yeah, more, more so when people own their own shops. But even though I'm not in my own shop here, I still treat it as, as if it is my shop. Like, the way I've always seen it is if I go into a shop and, like, I want to get a decent wage, you know. I like working on wages personally. There's a uh, little stress and all that. So I'm happy to work where I am. But, um, yeah, like, I still want to be on the best wage possible, obviously. So if I go into a shop and I might start a little bit lower than where I want, after a month or two, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you a pay rise. They can, For one, they can say, well, the material usage is down, the production is up, um, this, that, and that, we're not doing reworks, and all of those kind of things put in together, they'll say, you're worth it, you know, you're worth that extra 50 or $100 a month, a week or whatever that, that you've asked for. So obviously once I've got the uh, edge masking done, just get a bit of this uh, plastic, run it over the car, open it up, slice it out and tape it down. And as I say, it's it's uh, it's pretty straightforward masking. I, I quite enjoy masking, I don't know why. I just find it fairly relaxing. You can just chill out in the booth. It's not really stressful, it's, it's not difficult. I don't find it difficult. Um, at the start, like when you're an apprentice, it can get a little bit boggling, like, oh, where do I start and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, after a while, it'll just click with you and you'll get it. And um, it's a pretty important, it's obviously a very important stage. I'm, I'd say every single stage of spray painting is uh, very as, as important as the last, I guess. There's, there's a lot more to it than just uh, slapping a coat of uh, color on. Um, and yeah, color matching, masking, primer work, you name it, they're all important. You, you skip out one little stage, you might think like wiping it down with a tack rag. You'll, find, you'll soon find out that if you don't do that, that's just as important as the next one. Presentation, cleanliness, all that kind of stuff, even your polishing, um, it, it all counts together. So um, yeah, I'm one of those guys that I, I don't really mind doing anything. If, if I'm working in a busy shop and uh, there's only say two booths, but we have three cars that need to go in. I'll just say to the other guy, hey, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll do a bit of prep work for you here and there. It doesn't really bother me. Yeah, one spot I don't like is the polishing, but mainly probably because I was uh, 
tormented uh, as an apprentice by having to polish everyone else's jobs for years. Um, and I think most apprentices here in Australia get the similar treatment, so it's not, it's not just me. Um, but yeah, after years of polishing someone else's jobs, you just hate it. And I'd rather be in there smashing a coat of clear on. It's, it's good, but as I say, I don't mind doing any, any of the stages. There's not really one stage apart from polishing that I'd say I really hate doing, you know. Um, I'm just happy to be in the paint shop. Um, I find this quite a good job. Uh, you know, it's it's physical, but it's not physically demanding as such. You know, you're not going to go and break a leg or break your neck unless you do something pretty stupid, you know. Um, I'd say it's pretty safe. The only unsafe side would be uh, exposure to the chemicals, and that's something that, yeah, I'm pretty on top of. You know, I don't, I don't want to die due to being a spray painter. Um, I don't want to die early, you know, just for the sake of not wearing a respirator or an air-fed respirator or not wearing gloves when you're wiping your panels down with wax and grease remover or anything stupid like that, you know. Jeez, who would do anything like that? <laughs> but yeah, so obviously wiped it down with wax and grease remover. I've suited up, got the paint in the gun and got some gloves on. Uh, yeah, back when I started making these videos, I never used to wear gloves. I don't know why. I just thought they were for pussies, girls. Um, but it, it ended up getting to the point where it was, I was getting so many comments I just thought it's just gonna be easier to wear gloves to put up than answer every single time So I started wearing gloves and I would not go back for shit. No way would I go back um, And this is actually a mini gun that I'm using here. So this is the ANI R150 They do have a large pot for the R150, which is what I've got on there now um, This is a gun that won my mini spray guns uh, top eight so this was the top gun um, big reason was the price obviously it was a hundred and fifty dollar gun Australian dollars so probably like 120 US dollars uh, I think that's like 70 75 British pounds or something like that um, one of the letdowns was the pot on it though so uh, I upgraded to the larger size pot and the thread is a lot better it's heaps better so it's just a pain in the ass trying to get that thing on and off never actually had to have any uh, pot drips or anything but um, upgrade to that and loving it um, but when blending whites in specific and even solid colors what can happen is um, because especially if it's already been cleared over before so these cars here these Range Rovers are painted in clear over based from factory and what can happen if you don't um, turn the pressure up nice and high to get a fine atomization and what you see me do here is just sort of just feathering that trigger and so I'm really getting an absolutely fine atomization basically like an airbrush you're getting those uh, each blob of paint is really tiny because what what I've seen happen before has happened to myself when I've tried blending whites um, you can actually clear coat it and see every little daub of paint where you blended it doesn't seem to happen with metallics for some reason um, but yeah specifically solid color whites you've got to be very careful when blending them and um, it was actually only fairly recently that I figured out that was the best way to do it. Just take your time with that blend, set that trigger in nice high pressure. Obviously, be being careful that you don't go and get too much colour over your blend area, unless you're that happy with your colour. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'll just even avoid blends. Like if this car here was say like still a white car, it was like a new door off a. Um, a Toyota Hilux or something like that, commercial vehicle, van, no way I'd be using clear over base on it. Um, but the reason I did do clear over base, for one, it, it enables me to blend it, I won't have to worry about, you know, 100% colour match on it. Um, and also, clear coat sometimes dries quicker, you can put a bit of a racing clear on it, or your speed clear, you know, a bit of rocket in it or something like that, it's easier to polish. Um, and also, the car itself was painted in clear over base, so, um, yeah, I, I do like to keep them original to the car, like there's no use in putting two-pack direct, direct gloss on one of the panels. Two or three years down the track, it's going to be fading at a different level um, and possibly even have a bit of colour difference. Um, so yeah, the air cap that I'm using on this, I think it was HV25, I've got to do a review on that, that reminds me. So yeah, I've, I've actually got that video edited in the video editor and I've just got to do the narration side of it. So I'll get onto that soon, I've had a few questions about it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video, I had a bit of fun making them. Be sure to leave a bit of feedback down below if you think there's anything I could have done better next time. I'm always open to a bit of constructive criticism. 
Um, yeah, so obviously I uh, rolled the Ooh. masking off that top edge, so I did that false edge, if you did miss that. Um, and yeah, this is the car once it's all done. I didn't get it when, when it was all washed up, but yeah, as it rolled out of the booth, as you can see there, looks quite nice. So the following Monday, I just gave a slight buff over that uh, the top of that line, and then denibbed one or two spots, and happy days. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.